Welcome, Brony Nerds and Gamers! My name is Drummy, and this is Stoss Will Academy, a visual novel. I found this uh, from another YouTuber named Ratchetness, who reviews and does a lot of reactions of, of Brony fandom things. And it looked really interesting, so I decided to, uh, to pick it up. And it's been sitting on my computer for a while. Now I have a new mic to use it with, and I figured I'd try it out. It's a visual novel, so as far as I know, there's no actual gameplay. But, because it is a My Little Pony visual novel, with supposedly the characters of My Little Pony, and we have, not too long ago, finished our Super Lesbian Horse RPG, I think you know where I'm going with this. If you liked the silly voices before, you're certainly going to like them now. This all feels like one big dream. The movements in it aren't determined by me. Life is just taking me along for the ride. I'm certain it doesn't know what to do with me anymore. Before I even had a chance to wrap my head around what's happened, my life has changed around me once more. I have to try and figure out what's happening before it changes again. I always seem to go along with the decisions that are made for me. The people around me, while they have my best interest in mind, push me along and I never have much to say in the matter. I know my parents want what's best for me, but I never really get a chance to say anything about whatever they want me to do. If my teachers tell me to do something, then I have to do it. And I can't just turn down my friends. But is all of this what's best for me? I don't even know what's important to me in life. I haven't put much thought into it, and honestly, I'm not sure if I want to. Life is comfortable for me. After all, even if it is constantly changing, at least I always seem to have a good friend by my side. This is really no different, but at least the friend by my side this time is an old one. I know I can count on them to be there for me if I need it. I'm not sure if I'd be going to this school at all if they hadn't come back into my life, but for what it's worth, I'm grateful she did. Tom? Hmm. Oh! Tom? Hmm. Hey, Earth to Tom, what is this, sleeping hour? There you are. You were spacing out again. Oh, sorry. You should pay attention when someone is talking to you. It's rude to ignore people, you know. Jeez, what are you, Fox News? <laughs> I've heard this lecture before. If there's one thing I know about Ty... Ty? Um, it's that she always has a lecture prepared for when she thinks I've done something wrong. She really never changes. That is not Ty. I don't know if you could tell by the purple strands of hair, but that is straight up Twilight Sparkle. But whatever. Not that that's a bad thing. Sorry. I guess I'm just trying to wrap my head around everything that's going on. It's just too surreal. What's surreal about it? The fact it's happening at all, I suppose. One day, I'm happily attending school, and the next, Ty comes back into my life, trying to convince me to go to this fancy academy of hers. Am I speaking to her? Or is this all in my head? Is Ty just standing there looking at me like, Um, jeez. We don't even know this guy's name yet, do we? Oh no, it's Tom. It's Tom! Tom's the rock! <laughs> uh... I, I love it already. Trying. Succeeding. <sighs> Nothing, I guess. She makes an expression like she knows what I was thinking. Anyway. Is that what that means? I guess. Alright. You aren't still dwelling on this, are you? You didn't have to come if you didn't want to, you know. I sigh. No, you didn't force me. I just... I agreed to go, but I'm not sure if this is what I wanted to do. Things are moving so fast for me. 
It doesn't even feel real. You're... Whatever. It doesn't matter. You're going to school. You know? Just go to school, learn the bibbity bop Tom, and then you be good going to go home. Well, perhaps this would be a good thing for you. If you are stuck in a rut, trying new things is a good way to spur your creativity. Since you're always dragging your feet, I think Stars World would do you some good. Get a grip, game designers. Tom is a rock. He's always going to drag his feet. It probably will. After all, it's a prestigious school, and it'll challenge me academically. There will be new opportunities I wouldn't have had back home. Well, I bet you'll be able to find what you're good at before you know it. I laugh. <laughs> you make it sound so easy. You never know until you try, right? I suppose. You really should get more into the spirit of this. Star Studio Swirl Academy is going to be absolutely amazing. I can already feel it. Ty has a way of always seeing the brighter side of life. Whenever I'm unsure or uncertain about what's going to happen, she's already rushing forward. Excuse me, phone. She told me that while she was all... I'm uh, sorry. She told me that while she was away, she had met many amazing people and learned many amazing things. I'm still not entirely sure what she went through, but it seems to have made her grow quite a lot as a person. Excuse me, it's very unprofessional for me to check my phone, I know, but, you know, I got my socials to take care of. She must really have it together to have received the scholarship she did. The Headmaster Scholarship. It's so out of my league, it's kind of funny when I think about it. Now that you bring it up, how exactly are you paying for this? Actually, that reminds me. So... This headmaster, what's he like? She is my idol. Jeez, talk about being gender biased. Oh, I just assumed. Anyone would have guessed the headmaster was a man. Wouldn't a woman be headmistress? You are a sexist! Um, this game is rated 14 and up, so... You're a sexist dumb butt. We'll keep our language to a minimum until things get crazy. Although now that I think about it, I suppose that it's not that uncommon. Oh, there's a lot that could be said about her. At least she didn't give me a lecture on the subject. She has this sense of grace about her. She does everything with a regal air. She's incredibly smart, probably the smartest person ever. She's incredibly kind and forgiving, both wise and clever. It's Princess Celestia, isn't it? And for her age, she's beautiful. Wow, that's quite the glowing review, Ty. If I had to guess, it sounds like you have a crush on her. Oh, sick burn. <laughs> what? Absolutely not. I'm not a lesbian. It's not like I was just in a game about being a lesbian horse. She's just a very nice woman. Well, I'm excited to finally meet her. Jeez, Tom, get a grip. What are you looking for? A porno? <laughs> hey, it's okay with me if you swing that way. I just never would have guessed you went for the older types. Oh, jeez. This is gonna be a this is gonna be a rough one, I can already tell it. Ty turns away from me to stare out the window. Harumph! You're a jerk sometimes. I chuckle. Teasing her has always brightened my mood a little. Her reactions are adorable. You are really a sexist dumb butt! Is it? <laughs> oh, Stop belittling Ty, she could probably kill you anyway. I'm sure you'll like Star Swirl Academy. Just give it a chance, alright? I will, Ty. Don't worry. And why does Tom have this glazed look about him? 
The cabin goes quiet. Only the sound of the train clackling against the rails remains. After a few minutes of watching the passing landscape flash by, my eyes wander over to Ty. She's curled up against the window, resting her head in her arms. She seems so calm and peaceful, it's almost as if I were looking at a completely different person. Oh! My stomach breaks the silence. I shake my head a little, realizing I'm probably staring more than I should be. It's going to be a long train ride. Maybe I should go see what they have to eat in the cafe car. I open the door and step into the hall. Closing the door softly behind me, I make my way back to the head uh, I make my way to the back of the train. The cafe car is huge, much bigger than I expected. Hello there! An energetic voice calls out from behind the bar. Well, who could it be? Wood! The counter shakes and an empty cup falls to the floor. Ah! Who are you? <laughs> um. Uh. I, I'm drawing a blank. A girl jumps up, rubbing her head and wincing. You okay? I'm fine. She gasps when she sees me. Ah, Star Swirl? I glance down. With these clothes, I suppose everyone will recognize me as an academy student now. Yeah, I'm on my way to. My eyes are suddenly drawn to her clothes. You're a student at Star Swirl too. Mm-hmm. But then, what are you doing here? What am I doing here? Yes, that's what I just asked you, nameless person. She doesn't seem to follow my question. Oh, is this Derby Hooves? Oh, it might be. She's got a little bit of a crooked eyeness going right there. I mean, what are you doing here, working on the train? Oh, I'm making some extra money to pay for tuition. Not quite there. No, I mean, isn't the first day of school today? No, she's pretty much answering your question, but all right. It's rhetorical, of course. I'm sure the first day is today. Oh, yeah, it is. Only the first years really need to go to the first day. It's just orientation. For a school with a reputation like Star Squirrel, I expected them to be much more strict than that. All right. What reputation does it have, Tom? I'm really not liking Tom. He's kind of... He's kind of... He's kind of teasing, uh, pissing me off. I, I could say pissing, right? I'm not... That's not gonna... Is that gonna jump me up to mature rating? No? Not yet? Alright. He's kind of pissing me off right now. But that's okay. He's like 14. I'm sure any 14-year-old would piss me off at this point. The girl puts a sandwich in front of me. Here you are! But I didn't even... It's on the house! I do admit, the sandwich looks good. Groan! I can't argue with my stomach, especially with a groan like that, you know what I'm saying? Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, that's enough. Shoot, Dixie! Y'all keep giving away food like that, and you'll be out of business before the week's out! Another voice breaks the silence. Oh, it's Applejack and Rarity! Oh! I look towards the seating area. Two girls in Star Swirl uniforms are staring at us. Oh, it's all right. It's on the house. I'm not. I'm not sure that means what you think it does, Sugar Cube. Why, hello there, you! One of the girls calls out to me. Aren't you going to sit down and join us? I look down at my sandwich. I guess eating it back in our compartment might wake up Ty. Picking up the plates, I walk over to the table and pull up a chair. Hello, dear. My name's Rosalind. What's yours? That's not Rosalind. That's Rarity. Anyone would look at that and tell you that's Rarity. Look at that curly Q. Look at those diamond earrings. That's a Rarity. And that's obviously Applejack. But whatever. So it's Rosalind. 
She leans closer. Um. Er, Tom. Coming on a little strong there, Rosalind. Just gotta say. Well, hello, Tom. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Easy, girl. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Oh, Annabelle Jean. I'm just being friendly. It's not often we get transfer students. Annabelle Jean? So they, they just didn't go with any of their, like, actual names? I don't understand. I mean, that's obviously Applejack, and that's obviously Rarity, and Ty is obviously Twilight, and the person at the counter was most likely Derpy. I don't know. All right. We'll go with it. That's cool. I suppose not. Nice to meet you, Tom. Uh, you too, Annabelle Jean? Sure. If you want to be all formal and stuck up about it. Oh, that's right. Ah, uh, I, I screwed it up. Ah, uh, I screwed it up. Applejack's supposed to be Irish. I'm just fine. And you can call Rosalind Rose, too. Uh, no. Because there's a... Never mind. Just because I like to adhere to a certain level of politeness doesn't make me stuck up. Nah, you do that all by yourself. Um... Yeah, I totally forgot I was doing Applejack as an Irish lady. Well, just Irish. Really, really bad Irish. Yes, Tom? Well, it's just that... How did you know I was a transfer student? Well, you're not at orientation right now. And you're missing a little something. Hmm? What? What? Oh, oh! She tapped. They're both. They both got little signias on her on their collars. A silver diamond-shaped pin is affixed to her shirt. Glancing over at Anne, I know she's got a pin as well. A silver apple. What are? Crash! Oh, it's Dixie. Oh, it is. It's totally derpy hooves. Dixie, you all right, girl? Anne jumps up from her chair to assist Dixie, who is now bur uh, buried in a pile of plastic dishware. I'm okay. The two begin to gather the plates off the ground. I shake my head and take a bite of the sandwich. Urk! I choke down the bite and open the sandwich. It's nothing but mayonnaise and lettuce. Oh! That's not the worst I've had. Always look before you eat. I quietly slip the sandwich into the trash can next to the table. I'll just wait for the train station to get some food. Rose chuckles lightly. <laughs> Probably for the best. I guess I'll be heading back now. I was just about to head back myself. Shall we? By, by the way, for those of you who are wondering why Rarity and Kefka sound the same, uh, it was actually Kefka who came first. Uh, we started recording Final Fantasy and recording Kefka before I started playing Super Lesbian Horse RPG. I know, it's been sitting there for that long. But basically, I started doing the voice for Rarity like that uh, because of Kefka. Uh, we get up and head towards the front of the car, passing Dixie and Anne, who've mostly cleaned up the mess. Not even gonna stop to help. Oh, okay, alright, alright. Anything I can do to help? No thanks, Tom. We've got it. It was nice meeting you. You too, Dixie. I'll see you at school. Anne nods warmly. Oh, look, you can even see Dixie's little... Uh, bubble pin. We head back into the next car. As we pass the compartments, Rose continues her questions from before. So, your first time at Star Swirl? How exciting! What are you, a third year? Isn't that Twilight's line? No, I'm... Second? Fourth. What? That's surprising! It can't be that surprising. She nudges me a little. 
I'm sure you'll be fine. She stops outside a compartment door. This is my stop. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Hmm, a gentleman. I... Because I didn't, like, force you into your room and... Uh, all right. She winks. <laughs> See you soon. She steps inside and closes the door. Yeah, I don't really know how to touch that one either. I shake my head and turn towards my destination. Ty's still asleep. She's moved from using the window as a pillow to sprawling out over the entire seat. A small puddle of drool has formed near her mouth. Ew! I hate it when that happens. Ew! I should probably get some rest myself. I stretch and lay down on my chair. I'm surprised at how comfy these are. Well, yeah, look at these things. They are, those are practically beds. But I mean, if you're in a train for like 14 hours, you better be able to take a nap. <laughs> yes, they're perfect for napping. Tom? Someone's shaking me. Tom? Five more minutes. Tom! Wake up! We're almost there! I shift from my sleep and let out a yawn. Welcome back to the land of the living, sleepyhead. Jeez, what is this? Night of the living dead? Yeah, I got nothing. You were out like a light. Ugh. The train is comfier than it looks. I let out another yawn as I rub my eyes, letting Ty come into focus. Come on, grab your stuff. The taxi will be waiting for us. Star Swirl is just a short drive from the station. There's that gleam in her eye, the one that shows how excited she is. I usually only see it when she's saving a brand new book, but it seems Starswell draws out the same excitement in her. All right, I'm up, I'm up. I stand up and give a stretch before grabbing my luggage from overhead. Ty quickly does the same. The train stops outside a small station. Sure enough, a taxi is waiting nearby. Oh my, the car comes to a stop in front of some rather regal looking gates, slightly separated from the rest of the town. I figure it must be at least a 20 minute walk back to town. As I step out of the car, I am suddenly taken aback by the reality of the situation. In front of me are the gates that will lead to the next year of my life, and perhaps even something further in the future, something I can't even begin to grasp right now. Yes. Interesting. I can see a massive area of lush grass and trees beyond the gate. Just from looking at it, I would have assumed it was a park. But beyond the grass and trees, I can make out a massive building, which I assume is on the main campus. It's... it's huge! It seems Ty is in just as much awe as I am. This is far removed from what I'm used to back home, with a simple little house and a school that, while big, was nowhere near this size. If Ty has already been here, why is she surprised? Excuse me? Gah! I was so awestruck by the size of the school, I didn't even notice that someone was waiting for us by the gate. Dixie! Oh! Ah, that's nice. They got a little My Little Pony music. Did I say? Did I say My Little Pony? I, sorry, my my sciences are a little stuffy. Oh, excuse me. Uh, you know her? Yeah, I met her on the train. But wait, you're the welcome committee? Hi, Tom, and you must be Ty. The headmaster said you'd be arriving about now. That's right. Well, let me be the first to welcome you to Star Swill Academy. Oh, well, thank you. I really wasn't expecting such a formal greeting. I mean, we're just students arriving at school. Isn't that supposed to be a normal thing? Just how ridiculously upscale is this place? Well, it's a boarding school, obviously. Where'd you think you were going to? This is an academy! 
You're gonna have dorm rooms, most likely. You're weird, Tom. You're a weird guy. Well, that's all we have for this first episode. Uh, we'll be back next time with more of Star Swirl the Academy. Until then, leave a like or comment below, and as always, you can subscribe for more. Until next time, good night, everypony.